Hello, this is Wes at Bad Seed Games and we're going to be going over a third person perspective camera controller in this next series of tutorials. Now what I've got right here is the finished product set up where it has trigger points that when we enter them it'll be able to control where the camera goes. Now in this one it, the camera will go to a specific fixed location and remain focused on the player. In this next one we're going to tell it to freeze the position of the camera while still remaining focused on the player. Now this freeze will be frozen where it was last. Also a teleporting system because we are going to need a little bit of camera trickery to get this to pull this off. And a event, an event camera system where if you wanted to use it for a boss battle or for a particular set piece that you want the player's attention to be at this would be used for that. Alright, so let's get started. Okay, so I've got a scene set up right here. It's pretty basic. It's a regular cube that is scaled up to be a floor. A player object, as you can see here. A point light so we can see. And the camera matrix. Now what this camera matrix is, it is a standard game object, just an empty game object, with a camera that is parented to it. Sorry, a camera that is its child. Now, the camera itself is controlled with a simple two-state system of get position and move towards. And the main camera is a simple one-action look-at script. And it's always looking at the player. Now, the player itself is controlled by the third-person perspective camera third person perspective controller and this one is already outlined in Hutong Games' tutorial for the third person character controller so rather than reinvent the wheel I'm just going to post a link to that like, to that video in the description and then we can continue on from there now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the the, um, the trigger point for the freeze the camera in place and what we're going to be using is a cylinder. Oops, that's a bit too big. <laughs> we're going to be use a cylinder as the main mesh to see it. But the mesh in your final game is not going to be re required unless you choose it to be. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to use it so it's easier for us to see. And again, to make it even easier, I've created some simple additive particle materials in ba some basic colors. So let's add that in there. All right. Now, the three things that you see on this one is a cylinder, a capsule collider, and a mesh renderer. Now, for our purposes, all of these are going to be on, but for your own game, if you want to turn off the the mesh, you can either just unclick the mesh renderer, or you can remove the cylinder mesh filter component and the mesh renderer component. But remember to make sure that the capsule collider is set to be a trigger. Now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and create the finite state machine on the player object that will control the triggers as it enters. So let's add a new finite state machine. And let's give this one the name of camera trigger. Let's change the name of this state to idle. Now since we're going to be working with the trigger point that's going to be interacting with the player, let's go ahead and get the trigger event from the actions list and you can find this in the physics subsection. Now the trigger event, we're going to be using the system transition, a uh, system event of trigger enter. So let's wire that up to the trigger enter and let's filter this so that it collides only with the main camera tagged items. Now the ins we're going to have to give this one the same tag, so main camera the reason why we're giving it a different tag is because we're going to have to filter things through and manage them as we go along in this tutorial. And the best way of doing that is to give them unique tags. So all of the camera trigger points are going to be main camera. 
Okay, so once we're in here, let's add a new state to go to. Let's call this in trigger. Let's copy the trigger event over. And let's paste it in. But we're not going to have it on the trigger enter, it's going to be on trigger exit. So let's make sure that it has a transition that it can access. Trigger exit. And wire it back. Make sure this one's also set. Now let's give it a quick little preview. Alright, as I've entered, it has triggered. Alright, so that's a good start. Now, what do we want it to do when it's in here? Well, first off, we need to set up a few behavioral different things in here. So first off, we're going to add a new state. Let's call this one frozen. Since this particular trigger point that we're working on is going to freeze the camera in place, and let's give it uh, an event. Now, I've got some events already defined, so let's just wire them up correctly. And they're going to be global event global transitions. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that this particular finite state machine is communicating to the camera what we need it to do. So let's create a new state and go from the trigger enter into this new state. Now let's call this one no target. give this a finished state and to the end trigger and in the action that we're going to add to it it's going to be a send event now the send event is going to be sending it to a game object to a specific game object and we're just going to hard code the camera matrix in there and tell it to freeze all right so let's give it a shot see how it works and as you can see, as soon as we entered in, the new camera behavior occurred. However, when we exited, nothing it's not returning to its old position. So let's go ahead and fix that. So in the no target, let's just copy the action, and let's place it in the idle, and let's place it above the trigger event. But let's change this one to default. Now the reason why these events are already described is because the way that I work on the tutorials is I build the scene and then I strip them down into parts as I need. Now in this particular one since we've gone over if you follow the previous tutorials we've already gone over how to create events and making sure that they are global by checking them making sure these checkboxes are highlighted that should give you a good start so back to the camera matrix in the movement add a new state add a global transition and since we're calling the default let's name this one default so and wire it back so let's give it a shot okay so we're entering and it's returning now this is functional as it is, but let's refine it just a little bit more because I never did like it when the cameras were really slow to catch up to the player. So let's fix that up. That's easy to fix. All we gotta do is take the get position and move towards from the idle, copy them, and let's paste them in here. Now if you see the move towards, you'll notice that the location uh, sorry, this one is set to 9. Let's boost that up significantly. Alright, so let's give it another test. Alright, and it's working. But there is one thing that I'm sure you've noticed is that it is not exiting the default entrance state. So let's fix that up. The reason why is because in the move towards, there is no finish distance, which basically means that it's, in essence, going to follow it forever. So let's give it a finish distance and tell it to go finish once it's reached that. Let's 
give it one more test. Excellent. Okay. Now there are a few things that I do feel I should mention at this point, and that is that the, um, if you have noticed, the move towards in the camera movement is set to a maximum speed of 9, whereas the movement in the player movement control is set to 7. The reason being is that since this particular system works in concert with the camera, if they are both at the same speed, like I'll show you right now, they will work, but there are a few interesting elements that you should be aware of. So let's start this in. A, it's easier to show you. So as you can see, the left and the right seem fairly unchanged, but one thing that you may have noticed with the, uh, con the uh, simple move system is that when you're pressing in the diagonal it seems to go just a hair faster and since the camera is since the uh, player's movement is relative to the camera that gives us a little bit of a um, little bit too much flex in the camera now normally if you're this might seem pretty benign but as I'll show you as we go diagonally down the further we go eventually we'll reach a point where it will just start to bug out and the player will lose control. Now that's why I've set the uh, particular camera movement at 9 instead of 7. And if you remember that shifting that we saw where it would tilt, we still get that, just not nearly as pronounced. If you wanted to make sure that there is absolutely no shift, Let's try and boost that up a lot more. And as you can see, the higher the movement of the camera speed is, the less likely it's going to shift. So let's give it a 2. See what I mean? Alright, so let's stop that. Now at this point in time, we do have the workable single freeze the camera trigger point in place. So that's it for this chapter. Now the next chapter we're going to go over making the next one which will be a specific point where we want the camera to move to. But until then, I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have feel free to comment and rate it however you'd like and if you feel so inclined, subscribe too. But other than that, I hope you have a great day and catch you later.